Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Easy 11 Plus Live Lesson. It's a big welcome from me and from Grigri who wants to play with his mouse. There's his mouse. You play with that. Okay, let's see if I keep that balanced on my shoulder. How long is that going to last? Oh, and it's not going to last very long. Um, fantastic to have you here. I hope this lesson is very useful. We're carrying on with the... Oops, bashing my microphone. We're carrying on from the badgers with the Badger's comprehension from last time. Um, so we're going to be going through the last few questions. I don't think that's going to take us too long. I think this will be a relative, relatively short lesson, so you can go away and do important things like eating dinner. Now, there's a really very special, very exciting offer on where you can send me your marking for free, and I will give you feedback in little videos like this, and voice comments, and so on. If you want to find out more about that offer, go and have a look at the 11 Plus Lifeline page on the RSL Educational website. Just Google 11 Plus Lifeline, and you'll find that, and you'll find out all about this very exciting special offer. There's one comment coming so far in my stream from Abby, cryptically saying, Alana, I haven't even said your name. So Alana, you're, you have the name, that will not be spoken. It may not. Right, okay, let's get on with the comprehension for this week. So here are the questions. We did the rest last time. Um, if you want to find, if you didn't see last week's lesson, why not? You can find that on the Easy 11 Plus channel. There's still only one comment come through. Very strange. It's something strange about my streaming software. I've just got Abby's one wonderful but cryptic comment. So that will have to suffice. Um, okay, right. So, taken together, oh, and all the comments flying through. Um, Wubik's Lube says, who, a who else hates Compihentron? Um, Definitely not from the Netherlands. You only care about Dimitri and Grigri. That's right. I don't care about any of you. I hate you all. I only care about the cats. I'm just doing this for the cats. Um, what else have I got here? Um, David wants to know whether he's late. He isn't. Um, uh, Vaidei says live 57 was funny. I'm clearly going downhill since then, seeing as this is live 86. So it stopped being funny quite a while ago. Um, someone wants a shout out and cannot have it. Um, ho, ho, ho. Okay, right, let's get cracking. Anyway, question nine. Taken together, what do the words shambles and shuffles say about the easy 11 plus viewers? Uh, we have to look at lines 24 and 27, so let's have a look at that. So let's scroll down, you'll be very familiar with this if you looked at it last week. Uh, right, so um, 24 to 27, was it 24 to or 24 and? I can't remember my own question. Oh, I see, look, 24 and 27, shambles and shuffles, got it. So there's shambles, of course, also in the comments. And there is shuffles, which I've accidentally crossed out, but never mind. Okay, so... Um, the badger comes along. There's nothing to excite his suspicion. So he shambles to the nearest tree, puts up his forehead and rubs his neck, blah, 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 blah. He then shuffles a few yards away from the earth. So what does it mean if someone shambles along? So if someone's a total shambles, it means they're a total mess. Uh, but this is clearly describing the way that the badger moves. So it means moving in a slightly awkward, ungainly fashion and slowly. What about shuffles? If you shuffle, you're sort of shuffling along, and it's also a bit, little bit onomatopoeic. It implies a shuffling sound, I think. It slightly implies that, even though it isn't necessary. Okay, back to the question. So, the question, it says, taken together, what do these imply? So that means, note well, note up any, that you should not write, shambles implies this, shuffles implies this. You might even lose a mark if you do that, if the examiner's feeling strict, because you have to provide an explanation that deals with them as one. So really we want one sentence, okay? And we don't need to repeat the words. So what do these things suggest? Um, these suggest that the bad to move. What, what do we say? That it moves slowly, that it moves in a slightly awkward or ungainly fashion, and that it maybe makes a slight noise as it moves. Um, okay, so let's just write a sentence conveying those ideas. Um, so, and now you got my lovely handwriting. The, the badger um, moves in a, oh, oh moves, oh, yeah, moves in a slightly ungainly, nice word, means sort of awkward, clumsy, 
What on game were? What am I doing? It's because I had awkward on the brain and I'm bashing the microphone because it's too near to my tablet. Everything going wrong, um, but you're still here for some reason. In a slightly ungainly, um, um, unrushed, not unrushed, unrushed, I can't do English, sorry, unrushed fashion, um, perhaps making a slight noise. Okay, so we've got all the concepts that we spoke about. You can't read them, but never mind. Um, and it's very clearly a description that takes those two words together. Now we look back, have we have we done everything? Have we spoken about how the badger moves? Yes, we have. We even begin, the badger moves. Nice way to show that we're answering. Always show that you're answering the question, but don't repeat it. Um, have we done enough for two marks? We certainly got several points in there. Have we dealt with both words? Yes, I think so. Um, so I think this is absolutely fine, if I do say so myself. I'm going to give myself two marks. Um, please don't spam the comments, Anna, with your highs. Saying it once is absolutely fine. Um, and about a chowdhury, that is basically ambling. I disagree with you. I think ambling, to amble is to move in a very relaxed fashion, uh, but it's also quite smooth, ambling along. Um, I don't think ambling implies clumsy movement, ungainly movement in the way that shambles does. And also it doesn't imply noise in the way that I think the word shuffles does a little bit. Monit Singh, Robert, your screen isn't cleared. I've tried changing the quality, but it isn't working. I don't know what to say. Um, maybe there's some issue with the stream, but it's more likely that there's something um, getting in the way of your internet connection um, and slowing it down. It might be local or it might be regional. I do not know. Um, but I apologize, apologize to you for that. Um, Vibes with a Z says, I commented a piece of creative writing. Can you please give me feedback? I think it's worth a pen. Um, I think what Vibes means is that they put a piece of creative writing in a comment. I've been very bad with the comments recently. I haven't been checking them as much as I should. I will have a look out for your comment. Was it on my last video? Um, let me know where it was and that will help me. What does the word pied in line 29 mean? Now you may know this, but let's have a look because if you don't know it, maybe we can work it out from the text. Line 29, and we have got pied. Okay, so this is a description of the badger's face. Another pied face appears. Now, if you've got no idea what this word means, you're gonna be guessing wildly. It might mean sort of pointy, or it might mean sort of snuffly, or it might mean a little bit damp, or it might mean dirty, who knows? But a bit of cultural context might help you here. So where might you have come across the word pied? And I think there are two places where um, someone with a kind of common grounding in, in our culture, um, I mean, are in the broadest sense, um, might have come across this word. Uh, and I think they are the Pied Piper of Hamelin, a story that you might know, and the, the bird, a magpie. What do those have in common? The Pied Piper wears very colourful clothes, and a magpie is black and white. And in fact, there is more than one possible answer for this question. You could say that it means with more than one colour. You could say that it means black and white, or you could say that it means like a magpie. And in fact, I have researched this, and all of those are definitions that you might find in one dictionary or another. So any of those would be correct. Now we're talking about a badger here, the pied face. So I'm gonna go with black and white because I think it's the closest match. Um, it doesn't say write down the meaning. So I think it's good to provide a full sentence, but a full sentence can be very short. Now, when I say write a full sentence, some people will immediate, immediately start, write, start writing, the word pied in line 29 means black and white. You'd get the mark for that, of course you would, but it's unnecessary. A full sentence, just subject, verb, object, and the subject can be a pronoun. It. It means black and white. Quotation marks not essential here. Okay, and that's plenty enough for one mark. Over explained by me, as you as you expect. On to question 11, what's going on in the comments? Pied means different colored face, it does. Um, Fatima wants me to do something I'm not gonna do. Oops, I just did it. Um, uh, oh, a very neat definition from um, Anna Rudder. This gets, a, uh, this gets a shout out because it's so precise. It means having two or more colors. Cannot argue with that. Um, 
Comfort wants to know, will we possibly do comprehension in 11 plus? Will we possible, possibly, you, certain, you certainly will possibly do it. Um, virtually any 11 plus exam will involve some form of comprehension. But a lot of grammar schools, some independent schools as well, uh, ask you to do comprehension, multiple choice comprehension, where you're given various possibilities and you tick, tick off the one that you want or write it on an answer sheet. It depends on the exam, but the skills you get from doing written comprehension like this are still very useful for doing um, multiple choice comprehension. Um, um, defo not from the Netherlands, who is not from the Netherlands, I want to emphasize that it's definitely the case that they are not from the Netherlands, says um, Robert is just teaching peacefully and my gran is just like, where is he from? There might be a rude word in there that I'm eliding. Um, where Where is he from? Gosh, um, I didn't know my origins were a source of such mystery. Um, I'm from lots of places really. Um, okay, um, do you need any mental support? Goodness me, I didn't think I was coming across, you know, quite that is quite so troubled. Um, anyway, right, I should get back into answering this, shouldn't I, really, rather than just wasting time in your comments. I like your comments, they're funny. Um, okay, lines 29 to 33. Basing your answer on ideas from this section. Basic comprehension skills, people. If it you get something like this in the question, do not refer to things from outside those lines. Thank you. Write down two adjectives of your own. So we, you are not quoting from the passage. You need to come up with your own adjectives that are not in the text to describe the badger's personalities. Took me a while to get through that sentence, didn't it? Okay. Personalities, not how they look, not what they eat. Their personalities. Are they kind, over hasty, ambitious, that kind of thing. Okay. Right, two adjectives you're over hasty wouldn't work because that's two words, but never mind. Um, we'll just pass that one by. Okay, 29 to 33. Let's have a look. 29 to 33, so we are on this section. We're in this section here. Okay, another pipe facer here. And more quickly than the first, she trundles off to join her mate. And they bounce along one after another over the earth, round the trees, down one hole and out at another, and then rest a while outside the earth they first emerged from. What are they doing in this section? They're playing, aren't they? They're bouncing and rolling around and so on. So let's just, you don't need to come up with really complex adjectives. There are no extra marks for creativity. Playful is going to do us, it's going to do us absolutely fine, okay? Three more come forth and go through very much the same program as the first, snorting and bumping along one after the other and one against the other. Okay, so playful and um, what else can we say? Boisterous, I like that, but it's quite like playful. Um, they're very active um, and they're very sociable, aren't they? They're really interacting with each other. They don't go off to, you know, they're, they're not someone who sort of goes off to play quietly in the corner by them. A badger does not go off quietly to play in a corner by itself, at least not in this passage. So they're very sociable. Let's go for playful and sociable. Dead simple. You're not trying to win the Nobel Prize for Literature here. You're just trying to get the marks. So um, write down means you do not need to use a full sentence. I've explained this often. Write down is code for just write it down, okay? So playful and sociable. And hopefully the examiner can read my writing and gives me the marks. It's a debatable point. Um, Fatima suggests active. Yep, definitely. Vanita, really into nature. Um, that's three words, so it's not really an adjective, but also, um, I mean, they are, they are part of nature here. So I'm not sure that that would, would really count. Right, interesting one. Um, sorry for picking on you, Melina. I'm going to pick on you. Um, you said energetic and playful. Now, I think these would probably get the marks. Yes, of course. Yes, no, they would get the marks, actually. So it's not a good example. I'm not going to pick on you because that's fine. But beware of um, giving two words that are too similar to each other. Okay? Um, so, for example, if you said sociable and interactive, that would not get you two marks because it's essentially two ways of saying the same thing. So make sure that your words are clearly distinct from each other. Um, Shireen says, this is boring Robert. Um, it's very kind of you to be so sympathetic 
to my state of boredom, but I'm not bored yet, don't worry. Okay, 12, explain what the badges will do if you wink, wince, or move, according to lines 37 and 38. Um, surely they will wink back. Well, let's check. 37, 38. Here we are. Probably they take no notice, but if you wink, wince, or move, they will shamble back to the earth and watch you for 10 minutes. Okay. Um, it is then a trial for your nerves. That's not what the badges do. Okay. Probably let's look at the wording of the question again. What will they do? Explain it. Okay. So explain means that if you just repeat a lot of words from the text, you won't get the marks because you aren't explaining and showing understanding. But equally, it doesn't say own words. So you don't need to do it all in different words from the passage. So the main thing is that you show understanding and don't just repeat. What will the badges do? Explain it. Okay. So they will shamble back to the earth, shamble back to the earth and watch you for 10 minutes. Okay. So what's shambling telling us? They'll go back to the, the earth. In other words, you know, their den where they live. Will they race back to it in panic? If they see you, will they panic? No, they will walk slowly back to their back to the entrance of their home and watch you for a long period of time okay that's it you just need to explain it simply you don't need to employ fancy language or anything like that um okay um defo not from the netherlands um this is not the place for bad language even in abbreviations so just say why don't say why you know rude words thank you um, this is a family channel. Okay, so um, they will they will walk slowly back to their home's entrance and how about and watch you patiently. Because that's implied by the 10 minutes. You have to be patient if you're just going to watch something for 10 minutes. You have to be patient if you're going to watch this for 10 minutes, let alone however long I drone on for. Um, and watch you patiently. You don't need to be too patient, though, because we're moving through quite quickly. It won't take us too long. OK, have we explained? Yes. Have we explained what the badges will do? Yes. Have we dealt with both the things we underlined, which were shambling back to the earth and watching you for 10 minutes? Yes. Um, have we dealt with lines 37 and 38? Yes, I put a bracket around them before, so I definitely checked those bits and I've definitely covered everything that's there that's relevant to this. And have I done enough for two marks? Yes. So that's a checklist. Now that's really important comprehension tip, what I just did there. So I did not just check the question, check the text and write my answer. I then, having written my answer, this is the important bit, this is the, the master stroke of genius. I then looked back at the question and checked that I had done everything in it and done enough to get the marks. And then I move on. And that's really important. You must do that in your exam and in your practice. Question 13, explain the sentence. It is then a trial for your nerves. A sentence means that Robert's easy 11 plus lessons are so annoying that it really tests your ability to endure for 45 minutes or whatever it is. Um, um, but you come out of it feeling like you've really achieved something because you've, you know, got to the end without keeling over asleep from boredom. What else does it mean in this text? Line 38, two marks. So it is then a trial for your nerves. It's the next thing there. Okay, what does it mean? <coughs> so they go back, they've seen you. Let's set, let's set the scene, it's, it's a dramatic moment. The badgers have seen you. They walk slowly back to the entrance of their home and they watch you for 10 minutes. It's almost as bad as easy 11 plus. It is then a trial for your nerves. What does that mean? If you move, oh, I squeaked. If you move, you have seen the last of them for the night. So in other words, if you move, they'll head back inside and not come out again tonight. But if you succeed in being perfectly still, they will recover sufficient competence to sally forth again. But we'll take off quickly in different directions for their night's ramble. Okay, so the playfulness is over. It is then a trial for your nerves. So a trial, in this case, it's not with a judge, obviously, it's a test of your nerves. So normally a test of your nerves would be something very scary, very intimidating. 
Um, can you stand on the tightrope without wobbling and falling to your death? That would be a trial of your nerves. In this case, it, it clearly isn't that. There's nothing scary as such. Um, I've got a very scary kitten coming towards me. Come on, your fans, your fans are waiting. Here we are, kitten time. All right, there we are. He was going to drink my water. So, oh no, my jumper. Ah, I hope he doesn't pull holes in it. That would be extremely bad. And Mrs. Lomax would murder me. But no, the jumper has survived and he's gone off to lie down and not drink my water. Good. That was a trial for my nerves. Anyway, um, so it's not a test of your ability to endure fear. It must be a test of your patience. So it's a test of your ability to be patient and unmoving for 10 minutes. Oh, look, we've just explained what it means. It is a test of your patience as you remain entirely still. Okay? So that's fully explained. We've got trial and we've got of your nerves, of your patience, and we've also got a little bit of extra detail about what it is that you're doing that might test your patience. What we haven't done is gone off into a whole spiel about what the badgers will do if they um, if they see you, because that isn't what this question is asking. Okay, um, everyone's saying nice things to Grigory. Um, he says thank you. He's sitting just off screen, looking around, a little bemused. He doesn't quite understand why he isn't allowed to drink my water. Um, partly because I don't especially want to drink it after he's drunk it for all kinds of reasons to do with what cats do with their mouths, but also uh, because if he sticks his face into that water glass, he will not quite reach the water, he will knock it over and destroy my computer and that would be a great tragedy for everybody watching this live stream. Um, lots of people joining quite late, which is fantastic to have you. Just to let you know, you can rewind to the beginning of the lesson, but you can also rewatch the beginning afterwards if you want to. So have no fear, you have not missed out. Okay, question 14. Read lines 40, this, month. this is the last, qu this is the last question. We're almost there, people. We're almost there. I told you it'd be quick. Read lines 44 to 48. That will be a pleasure for us all. Using your own words, explain what the watchers have and have not gained from their experience. Okay? So what they have gained is a write-up in this book, and what they have not gained is a complimentary Mars bar. Um, that would not get you marks, however. What have they gained and what have they not gained? Three marks available. 44 to 48. Again, we bracket it off. I strongly recommend doing this. It will help you to keep finding the right section. Oh, I've had a cat on me again. <clears throat> and lo and behold, I need to blow my nose. Oh, it draws away. I get such an itchy nose when I have a cat on me. I guess it's because my nose is my grandest feature and all the cat hair just gravitates it towards gravitates towards it like some kind of, you know, it's like some kind of, you know, interplanetary body being sucked into a solar orbit. Right, um, so. We've made no startling discovery. I've better check the question again. I'll be so busy talking about my nose. Um, it sucked the life out of the lesson. What they have and haven't gained, that's the one. Okay. We've made no startling discovery. Oops, on our first night together by the badger set. It's a bit of a downer. Um, but probably we have made a better acquaintance with badgers in this hour than we could have gained in any museum of natural history. That's nice. With the assistance of the most erudite fellow of the Zoological Society. Okay, this, as is characteristic for this text, that is a rather wordy and over-the-top way of saying a simple thing, but never mind, that's why I've picked it as a comprehension task, because it's um, pulling meaning, gems of meaning, out of a load of overwritten nonsense. So, we have made no startling discovery on our first night together. What have they not gained? They have not learned anything that they didn't know beforehand. But we've probably made a better acquaintance with the badges in this hour than we could have gained in blah, blah, blah. So they haven't discovered anything, but they have become acquainted. What does that mean, to become acquainted? If someone is your acquaintance, it means they're someone you know, right? So I've made a better acquaintance with, the, with badges. It means they've become familiar with them. They've got a kind of feel for them. Okay? They've kind of made friends with them. And they've done that better than they could have done even in a museum with some scientific expert with grand titles telling them about them. So given a choice, if they'd gone to a museum and had a lecture from an absolute expert, they wouldn't have got to know badges as well as they have just watching them here, even though they haven't really learnt anything. So it's a little bit paradoxical, but not too much, I think. Okay, so using your own words, 
So we have to avoid repeating any key things from the text. Now, as regular viewers will know, the text and the questions are linked in the video description, or if you're on my mailing list, you'll have got them by email um, yesterday, I think. I was a little bit slow with it this week. Um, and so you can have the text open alongside, as I'm doing this, as I'm answering this longer question, so you can see what madness I'm conjuring with. So um, they, they haven't, that says haven't, honestly, they haven't learnt, I promise you that says learnt, they haven't learnt anything very surprising, just as you haven't learnt anything very surprising or useful in this lesson. Um, so they haven't learnt anything very surprising. But they have found a way to avoid doing their homework for half an hour. Nope, that's not it, sorry. They haven't learnt anything very surprising, but they have got to know badges, so that's the gaining acquaintance with them, so it's not the microphone, so if your speakers just went boom, boom, oh no, oh no, I've got, ah, my pen is magnetic, so that was even worse, it just magnetized itself to the microphone. Robert, stop messing and do your job. Sorry, sorry, greedy. They haven't learned anything very surprising, but they have got to know badges better than, and so I glance back at the text, Keep glancing to and fro between the text and the questions and your answers. That's a good way to do it in an exam. Um, better than they could have done, um, yeah, in a museum with an expert guide. Let's go with that. Better than they better than they could have done even in a museum with an expert guide. Now, I may as well not have written this answer because it's utterly illegible, but never mind. They haven't learned anything very surprising, but they have got to know badges better than they could have done. That have is just an abomination. Better than they could have done, and that's even worse. Better could love done, oh, oh, never mind. Better than they could have done, even in a museum, that's what that squiggle means, with an expert guide. Okay, I think that's pretty thorough. Now. Using your own words, it means that you need to explain it as you would explain it to a friend, such as my friend Grigri here, who was very impressed by my answer, um, or my friends in the comments um, who are just writing rubbish. Um, uh, as always, I love the rubbish you write um, when I occasionally glance at it. Um, so you're explaining it to a friend, you're my friends, um, in simple terms, not repeating key ideas from the passage. Because the point is, if you repeat key ideas from the passage, then you might not have understood them because anyone could just download text. So have we done that? Well, we've repeated the word museum, but that's fine. Everyone knows what a museum is. It isn't the key idea here. I'm not going to write place of learning as a sort of difficult circumlocution to avoid repeating that word. Um, but I've definitely used my own words here. And I've showed understanding of the, you know, fellow of the Zoological Society by writing an expert guide. Um, I have written, we have made no startling discovery as we haven't learnt anything very surprising. Um, I've dealt with, made a better acquaintance with, by writing, got to know better. So everything here is expressed in my own words. It's fine, it's going to get the three marks. You know it. Um, of course it is, because it's a comprehension that I wrote myself, so of course I know how to answer it. Goodness me, what a load of rubbish. Okay, I think that's enough of that. I think it's time for the... Cue slightly overlong pause while I desperately try and remember what my tip of the week actually was, um, because one of my weaknesses is remembering my very carefully developed plan for these lessons. Um, yes, as you go through your learning process, including from the very beginning, you're going to become aware of your weaknesses. See what I did there. Um, and it's very easy to just say, oh dear, I'm not good at that, and then move on to the next thing and proceed to not be good at it again, and so on. Very simple advice for this week. Why well, squeaking? Very simple, very simple advice for this week. Keep a, keep, take notes of your weaknesses as you come across them. Because even if you don't put specialist attention, even if you don't give specialist attention to dealing with that weakness immediately, although maybe you should, 
you will definitely in a few weeks time want to know that you're making progress and you'll want to be able to check that weakness that you noted down and see whether it's still weak and whether it needs extra attention now. Um, and when you come into preparing more intensively for your exams in the last few months, you really will want to have a record of, of the things of the areas where you're less strong, of the particular skills, of the particular question types, so that you can concentrate on them and make sure that those things aren't weaknesses anymore. So it's a very simple tip. As you work, in your little notebook that I've always mentioned, already mentioned in the past, have a page where you note down key weaknesses so that you can come back to that list, check things off, and make sure that your weaknesses become your strengths. That's the tip of the week. Very succinct. I hope you admire that. We're absolutely rumping through. It's insane how quickly we're moving. Um, any questions coming in in the comments? Um, someone says, your free trial of air has ended. What free trial? I didn't know I had a free... Oh, off you. I've just, uh, they've reactivated the free trial. That's good. Um, what else is going on? Um, the tip of the week, apparently. Uh, yeah, that's been and gone. Um, some girls are being mean to me at school. What do I do? Um, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, well, I mean, I remember an experience when I was at school and somebody was being very mean to me. And um, I remember that uh, at one point it reduced me to tears because I just felt trapped by it and I just didn't have a sense of what to do. And the answer is really, really, it's so obvious that many children just never do it which is talk to somebody about it. Talk to your parents, talk to a teacher who you trust. There's always this feeling that if people are being mean to you, if an adult gets involved, it'll get worse and they'll ostracize you and um, not the adults, the, the children who are mean um, and that everyone will start rounding on you. That is hardly ever what happens. I remember when there was this person who was bullying me at school um, and I was really nervous about talking to a teacher. And then in the end, when I did, um, they spoke to the person quite severely, and the problem just went away. It just it just disappeared. And I couldn't believe how quickly it disappeared because this was like a big, mean guy who was much bigger and stronger than me. Um, and the teacher I spoke to, you know, wasn't somebody who I would have thought could, you know, um, um, easily, you know, deal with this. But it just, the problem completely went away. Um, so when people are mean to you, absolutely the best and first thing that you should do is talk to, yes, talk to your parents, but also talk directly to a member of staff whom you trust and just be honest about what's happening and about what you feel. Um, and very often the problem will be dealt with. And I really hope this does get better for you. Um, um, I changed my mind says I absolutely hate people in my class. They are so judgmental. I don't know what you mean by the comment because I don't know what you mean by judgmental. But again, I'm sorry that you two are having a difficult time. Um, I mean, if the judgmental spills into you know being actively nasty to you then uh, my the same advice that i just gave but one thing that i would say is that often in life you know people are going to judge you for all kinds of stuff um and often often it's just not worth worrying about and also people get bored of you know judging other people for things and they move on um and so yeah definitely bullying of any kind you should talk to an adult about it but if you just don't lie the way that people in your past in your class are always being critical of other people or you know disapproving of your choices it's your life live it and other people's judgments just don't really matter so much in the end um do you have any tips for writing a description like what you need to focus on when you are writing a description asks diamond panda yes i have loads of tips as revealed in my many videos on writing descriptions um, but i should also point out as i did at the top of this lesson that i am currently running a special offer in which you can submit writing tasks to me for for free feedback have a look at the 11 plus lifeline page uh, just google 11 plus lifeline and there's a banner at the top at the moment uh, click on that banner and it will take you to the page um, for the free feedback. There are some terms and conditions there, uh, but they're not too onerous. How do I pass the Kent exam? Look at my video on the Kent test. Um, and uh, it's got quite a nice cover on that video as well that I enjoyed designing. Um, I have a question. I passed my grammar test and the result they're going to tell us, and, and the result, this is that young person thing of not punctuating, isn't it? I passed my grammar test and 
and the result. I think you passed the result. They are going to tell us if I got in or not tomorrow. I got 213 marks and the pass mark was 205. Do you think I'll get in? Um, I'm not an expert on this stuff. It sounds like you exceeded the pass mark, so fingers crossed. Uh, all I can say is I really hope it works out well for you and that you get good news tomorrow. Um, but whatever happens, it, obviously you're someone who does really well in tests and you're very bright and you're very motivated because you're here in this lesson. So as I often say, you are going to do well at secondary school, whatever happens. It's pretty clear. Um, what else is happening? Um, um, Fine, wants to talk about question 14. Uh, the explorers haven't gained anything interesting or strange from the badges, but they got a better view of the badges for this night. I think I guess about half the marks. Um, so you say they haven't gained anything interesting. That's wrong, because they do say that they've gained a better acquaintance than they could have got you know, talking to an expert in the museum, they're clearly interested. What they haven't done is learnt anything, as you say, very strange, very surprising. Um, also, by not mentioning the museum thing, you're running a bit of a risk. Uh, so I think that's worth one and a half to two marks out of three. Um, how do I keep my motivation to study? Asks Krishna Singhal because La Singhal, uh, sorry if I mispronounced that, because last night I started great, but at the end of my paper and homework I didn't want to study anymore. Um, I think this is one of those cases of people worrying about things they don't need to worry about. It's completely normal that at the end of a piece of work you're not feeling very motivated anymore and you want to do something else. Um, I'm getting towards the end of this lesson and I'm quite keen to finish it and go and do many of the wonderful things that my life has in store for me. Uh, that doesn't mean that I hate doing these lessons, it's just because I'm a human being and that's normal. I think that's what you're talking about. Um, so I think just relax, go easy on yourself. There's nothing wrong with getting a bit bored of studying at the end of a session of study. That's fine, that's why we take breaks. Don't stress, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, are your live videos based on the exam to get into grammar school? Um, so the skills are pretty much all transferable to any exam, but most grammar schools set multiple choice tests rather than written comprehension. However, I have many, many videos on multiple choice tests and I have many videos on grammar school style exams. So um, the channel has got loads of it. Um, Fatima's sister loves me. Um, that's very kind of you. Um, 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 what can my schedule be if I have to wait for one year and four months till my exams? Um, I think 10 minutes of panic every day, 20 minutes of trying to start work and failing, and then a 20 minute break, I would say. Uh, and do that every day and you'll be fine. Um, no, look, you've got lots of time. So don't, don't overload your schedule. I think what's implied by your comment is that you're worried that you're gonna get bored of studying. And I think that's right, that if you, if you do too much exam focused work, you probably will get bored of it. So do a, a, a bit quite often and make sure that you're moving forward and developing your skills. Uh, don't do lots of timed work because you'll just end up making the same mistakes faster and faster, which is not a good outcome. Uh, so work slowly and carefully, focus on getting better at particular skills. And yeah, and take it easy, you know, give yourself lots of breaks, give yourself days off and then build your schedule and become a bit more intensive as you get into the last year, as you get into the last nine months. And then in the last sort of six months or so, realistically, in that period, you will study more intensively and then you'll start doing more time limited work as the exams approach, that sort of thing. You'll find your own rhythm. It depends on you. Um, lots of repeated questions, questions already answered. Um, People asking whether I think they'll get into particular schools. I don't know, but I do hope that you do, and I wish you the very best. Um, honey and Benny, I'm scared to do the 11 plus. I know that's not a question, but I think it's a very honest statement, and I think many people wouldn't admit to feeling scared. Um, I think what you're scared of, scared of, I would guess, is trying and failing, which is a really normal thing to feel. And I think there's a really human instinct that we don't want to try things because we're scared of failing at them. Um, because we'll feel bad about ourselves, we wonder whether we're worse than other people, we wonder what other people think, and so on. It's completely normal. I feel this in my life. I reckon everybody here feels this, you know, feels this to some degree. Um, I think the best approach is to treat the 11 plus as an opportunity. It's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to bring all your skills from primary school together and have a chance to show them off. Um, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter all that much. If you prepare well for the 11 plus, if you're somebody who you know, gets yourself to a good point before those exams, you're gonna do fine wherever you go to school. It's gonna be fine for you, it really is. 
Um, and yes, of course, trying and failing is embarrassing and it makes you ask questions about yourself and it makes you doubt yourself, but that's life. Life's gonna be full of things like that. Um, you're gonna succeed in some things and you're gonna fail in others. In my life, I've succeeded in, in some things that I'm really proud of and there were some things that I really wanted to achieve, really, really wanted to achieve, devoted years and years to, and just didn't make it at. That's normal, it's being human, and you're just going through something that all of us have to go through. And it's an opportunity, you know, to bring your skills together, to grow a bit as a person, so that's a horrible cliche, Ugh. but anyway, it's true. Um, just do it and do your best, and try not to take it or yourself too seriously. That's really all I can say. Um, uh, I can't do with everything here. Um, some people saying they get bored of studying. I spoke about that earlier, there's nothing wrong with getting bored of stuttering, studying, so do I. Um, have you, Robert, have you worked in other grammar private independent schools other than CH? And no, that's my only experience of working in a school. I worked for a year in Christ Hospital. They called me uh, in an absolute panic saying, oh, we need a history teacher to start in a month. Uh, and I said, I've only done AS level history. And they said, it doesn't matter, come please. Um, which was very flattering. Um, less flattering when I discovered they'd asked, asked uh, one of my best friends before me who had said, he'd said no. But anyway, um, and then I went off and did that for a year. And then I decided, I had the option of carrying on. I decided not to because I wanted to do some other things in my life. Uh, and I never went back to teaching in the school, but I did absolutely love it. It was a fantastic experience. Um, um, anyway. Uh, do, 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 do you do Reading Boys preparation videos? I haven't done any videos specifically on Reading Boys, but I mean, a huge proportion of my videos are relevant to the Reading Boys exam. Um, so sort of yes, really. Uh, I don't know Redi whether Reading Boys issue their own past papers. I don't think they do. Um, and that's basically the criteria. If a school releases its own school specific past papers, then I can do a video on it. Uh, if not, then I can't, basically. Um, if a school does GL or CEM exams, then I can I can do papers that I've designed that are similar to those tests, and I've got lots of videos on those. But I can't just rip off a load of stuff from those boards' websites and do videos on them because um, they wouldn't let me. Okay. Um, oh, someone has very kindly accused me of being younger than I am. Keep doing that. Excellent. Um, what types of books should we buy for the eleven plus? Accepts RSL educational. Um, well, I'm very much in favour of you buying my books. Um, I'm also in favour of people using books from a mix of publishers. But frankly, beyond my books, which of course are wonderful and will bring light to your life, um, it depends on which exams you're sitting, really. Uh, so I can't give a blanket answer to that. But try a few things out and find what works for you. Um, capital letters. Robert, three exclamation marks. Well, I better answer this one. Um, is Henrietta better or Latimer? This is super important. Uh, they're both fantastic schools. Um, it depends on you and your situation and what you want to achieve. Um, <laughs> not the answer you wanted. Um, they're both rubbish. I'm not gonna say that because it's not true and I'll get in trouble. Um, since when have you started Easy 11 Plus? When did I start Easy 11 Plus? Goodness me, very long time ago. Very long time ago. Goodness me, a long time ago. Uh, getting on for two years ago now. Can you believe it? Um, yeah, I know. Wow. Is that right? Yeah, it is. It was like the April before last, I think. Fireman's bought all of my books. Fantastic. All you need to do now is subscribe for 11 Plus Lifeline and then your life will be complete because that's where the real action happens for 11 Plus Lifeline. I'm going to finish soon because this is fun, but not fun enough to justify keeping you from your dinner. Um, what should you do if you only have four months until the 11 Plus? Panic, I would say. Panic and cry. Um, that is my main advice on which to end this video. So guys, it's been fantastic to have you here. Um, I hope you have a lovely, relaxing week, panicking and stressing, um, as which is really, those are the only really valid exam preparation techniques. Uh, look at, be like Grigri, see the panic and stress on his face. That's how you need to be. Um, I'm just gonna knock off where I started saying, there's this amazing 11 plus lifeline offer where you can get free marking without even signing up, which is just incredible. What more amazing offer could there be? You'll get your work back with little videos you can click on, little sound recordings you can click, click on. Look how excited about this offer Grigri is. That is how exciting this offer is, folks. All right, so Google 11 plus lifeline and find out how your life 
can be complete with this amazing special offer. Um, all I would say is if you get in touch with me with that special offer, please uh, ask your parents to get in touch with me. Don't email me yourselves. Um, okay, Grigri looks like he's being tortured. Uh, that strikes me as a slightly eccentric explanation of a basically sleeping kitten, but what do I know? Okay, I'm just going to waffle a bit because there's a time delay, you know, so I'm just going to come back up. Point. What do you think of this, Grigri? What do you think of the torture you're enduring? He says it's unbearable. He says he's about to tell me all his secrets. Where have you hidden the cat treats? Where are they? Where are the cat treats? Tell me. Tell me. Or I'll keep going with the torture. He says, please keep going with the torture. Okay, then I'll rub your belly. Uh, 